talk to Kalani the ghost hunter. We've had him on the show before. He stayed at the Circle House in Centerville, Ohio, if you remember. And uh, we actually have an invitation by the sheriff to go stay there at some point. So we are going to do that. But he has some cool stuff. He's got a great website, cool videos right now. And he told a story on social media about some interdimensional stuff that went on. So we got to talk to him. Kalani, how are you? Hey, Kalani. I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Good. Welcome back. Before we get into that podcast that made big waves this week, last week, whenever it was, just this past December, you were in Torg mentioned, uh, what was it, Chillicothe? No, no, Circleville. Circleville. You were in Lancaster, Ohio at that infirmary I saw on your website, and that was just, uh, what, December? Well, so I actually was back at that infirmary in February. I went to the infirmary in Lancaster in February. So last month you were there. Yeah, so yep. that that's pretty active, huh? Yeah, it's a it's a pretty active spot. I had a I had some interesting stuff that night. Um that that's a really interesting place and one if you're in that area, you definitely should try and check out. What's the background? I'm I'm unaware of this. So it used to be like a poor farm and there were some uh, people in power that were very abusive to some of the people they had there, but people that were migrants, homeless folks, people that had some uh, disabilities okay. they were all sent there as like a catch-all. But there actually is like hundreds of people buried in the backyard of this place that don't have any headstones, and no one knew who they were, no one claimed them, and they're all just there. Wow. And the YouTube video I saw, part of it, your wife is, is in that one video. When last when we first had you, were you working with your wife? I think you were solo at that point, right? Yeah, I was doing more solo stuff. My wife has recently started to come around um, okay. doing it with me. And, yeah, she was in that video I did on YouTube from Lancaster. Hey, before we get to uh, the kind of interdimensional stuff, because I just find it fascinating and get into it with you, Tell us about, you got a YouTube video. It's got uh, almost uh, uh, 50,000, 40,000 views. It was February of this year. What's What was the deal with that apartment in New Orleans? Yeah, so that's a really tragic story. Um, it's based off of a, a murder-suicide that took place in 2006. The, the place was supposed to be haunted before that ever took place, but that's probably one of the most, it's just the weirdest environment I've ever walked into. So before I went down there, I knew nothing about the story, nothing about what happened in the apartment. And once I went into the apartment without even knowing anything, I walked into the bathroom where some of that had took place and it, and it felt like electric. The moment I walked through the door, it felt like your body knew there was something off. And then once I found out more about the story, I was like, well, shoot, that makes sense. Um, but it was just a very gruesome story. Um, it's, it's very, it's not as old as some of the other ghost hunting or, or haunted locations I've done, which I think does make it different. So I tried to approach that one from a more respectful standpoint. But, yeah, that place is wild. Uh, Kalani, the ghost hunter, is with us. KalaniGhostHunter.com is his website. He's everywhere, YouTube, all social medias, travels the country, searching everything out. Yeah, you mentioned sometimes I get a feeling and I'm always quick to dismiss that feeling in my gut that something doesn't feel right here. But then other times it cannot be denied, right? You ever get that where you just walk in and you go, something bad is here? Yeah, I mean, after you do this enough, you kind of get a little bit more discernment on what you're feeling. Yeah. Um, and I think for me personally, like, I've been able to kind of not walk into an environment expecting to be scared or expecting to be uh, encounter a ghost or anything like that. So I think having that level head at times is very critical in, in keeping bias out of it. Yeah, but sometimes you just can't you can't really shake that feeling of walking into certain places and how you feel. All right, this might be, you know, stupid question, though. Okay, so back 1970s, 80s, people would go into a haunted area or maybe an area where they think that's activity, take a tape recorder, record, not get anything, and then I see your videos, other people's videos, where they're taking a tape recorder and then like that New Orleans audio that you have where they're talking. What's the difference there? Why couldn't 20, 30 years ago these spirits talk and then now is it is it updated equipment where we can hear them a, a whole hell of a lot better than we used to 20 years ago? Well, you know, honestly, my personal theory, um, one, the equipment's better now, but two... If you think about the amount of radio frequency 
and and just energy that we have flowing just based off of our technology. If you go off the fact that spirits need energy to kind of manifest, then we have a lot more accessible energy now based off of our technology and infrastructure than they would have in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, I was going to bring up the frequency thing. um, And in this podcast most recently, boy, you got the run. Tell us about Raymond and, and what happened. Yeah, so this was the first experience I ever had, and this this is still one that perplexes me today. But essentially, we had a standard investigation that we were doing, and this was one of my this was the second week long or third week long I'd ever done um, at a location. So the first time I ever did this week long experiment was at the house in Circleville, and then this was the third time I did it at this place in Fort Wayne, Indiana, called the Bell Mansion. Now, we're standing in their old embalming room, and um, all of a sudden, my, my wife is under Estes, so anyone that's familiar with my content, my wife goes under the spirit box and just repeats what she hears. But anyways, so we had this guy come through, said he was from the year 2082, which initially that threw up red flags in my head because, you know, I thought ghost hunting was limited to the past. speaking with things that are dead. Yeah. Um. But as I as I soon found out, you know, I started asking more questions, and it, and it was very apparent that this person from the future that told me his name was Raymond was ghost hunting for me in the same place that I was ghost hunting in, but he thought I was dead and thought I was the ghost that he was ghost hunting for. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is just crazy. Yeah, and, and, you know, some people are like, well, you know, there's no proof. This guy's just reading movie scripts, but... You know, honestly, in the moment, because I was doing all this live. So, you know, I had this test. I was like, okay, Raymond, if if this is remotely real, let's see. So give me your grandfather's Facebook name, and I'll look your grandfather up on Facebook because he's probably alive in my time. So I get a name coming coming through, and then I find this guy on Facebook that matches the correct area <gasps> and the correct name, and I start looking, and – his page is super deep in interdimensional travel and astral projection. But as I'm scrolling on his page, my wife repeating what she hears in the spirit box says, this is getting dangerous. I have to go. And then it just stopped. So the moment that I started, that I found his page, yeah, um, it, it, it kind of, I don't know if that sent a warning flag to him or, or what, but something I didn't add in that podcast was I asked a question to Raymond can he hear and see people that other people can't hear and see? Because, you know, some people claim to be psychic, Yeah. you know, and I think there's some people out there that really do have abilities and some that don't. But it made me wonder, what if he's seeing me sitting in that room thinking I'm a ghost, not realizing that I'm alive in a different layer of time? So this was the first experience I've had. This is actually one of a few separate occasions where we've had this time bleed. And could he see you? He couldn't see me. He could only hear my voice, which was weird. Um, but he could. He, he he was telling me to like knock on the wall, and like I'd knock on the wall, and then he would like curse back to me, like he was shocked. So you're the you're you're the subject now. Yeah. So, oh so, man. So did he believe that you were alive, or did he think you were? What did well, he was, believe? There was hesitance up until you know probably three quarters through the conversation thinking that I was just a ghost that didn't know they were dead. Um, but after I, I, you know, completed a few of his tasks and was just having a conversation, you could tell that was ever, whatever was coming through on the other side was just as shocked as me on this side. Boy, that gives a lot to think about, doesn't it? Yeah, so are, are, you, are you done with this? Are you going to contact his grandfather on Facebook and start a conversation? Well, I sent a message at, in that moment and never heard anything back. It was the weirdest thing. Because I send that message, and and that's kind of where I think there could have been a mess up, right? Because, you know, if you watch enough movies, you know that if you're in the past, you can change the outcome of the future by doing a few different things, right? Yeah. So partly in my mind, like, what if I just erased this guy's existence by sending this message? But Or you just changed his name. They just give him a different that's, first name. And that's why yeah. he had to go. Yeah. Because he was worried about that. It'd be no different than you channeling somebody from 1975 that died. And you they start looking into your stuff. You're going to cut that off right away for free. Yeah. I don't want to get sucked into that. Yeah. Yeah. So is there a so, video of this on your website? 
Um, it's not on my website. It's been on my Patreon for like a year and a half. It's a really long video, and there's not I, like the only thing I could do is probably chop it up and post it somewhere because um, there's it's like three and a half hours long. Wow! Because it's like from beginning to end that night I was there. Um, but I haven't told this story in probably a year. But I'm actually doing some things this year to try and have this happen again or set up an environment to have this happen again. Um, because this kind of changed the way that I saw the potentials and what, what I'm actually speaking to. Right. It's a game changer. Sense. Yeah. So, yeah. so yes. Kalani, the ghost hunter is with us and he's got Kalani, uh, ghost hunter.com. It's a great website. You got links to everything is social media videos, Twitch surveillance cameras. I mean, you go on, you could listen, you're not working right now. So go on, on his website and goof off. Um, so, in your opinion, what happens when we die, and why can you only talk to certain people and not everyone? You know, that's that's what's that's what's interesting about it is, you know, I try and remove religion from it because obviously yeah. I have my religious beliefs, but I feel like for everyone to enjoy what I do, if I remove that component and just make it as science based as I can make a pseudoscience, um, you know, I found that it is very unique at how certain spirits can come through and certain spirits can't. And then when you get into this futuristic stuff, it kind of adds another layer. Like what if we aren't communicating with something that's dead, but things that are just alive in a different time, not only in the future, but also the past. (laughs) Right. So when we're talking to a ghost in a place that we know that someone was nameless, we could just be calling out to somebody that we know is supposed to be there. Then they're freaking out in their time because something from the the world is, is calling their name. And then they start telling people that place is haunted. So then the, the lore on this place gets built that it's haunted, but it's just us going back to try and communicate with people that were there, causing the haunting of then, which creates us going there now for the haunting presently. All right, let me throw this one more I at you. Kind of follow that. Because I love what you're saying about <laughs> science, okay? So scientifically, they look into climate change, the ocean, the environment. They look in science, uh, coronavirus, different diseases. It's all about the science. So why, to me, what you're doing is just as important as all of those things I just mentioned, right? And it's in some type of degree. So why, from a scientific level, are more scientists not doing their part looking into this? I mean, honestly, I think it's it's just it's not something that has been socially accepted for for a while like i mean in the past 20 years it's it's gained a lot more traction and popularity i'd say i'd say you probably will have more people that are smarter than i am looking into it um which is which would be beneficial because even if they can't explain to me you know some of the stuff i think having someone with the correct environmental conditions and and better equipment and testing certain environmental factors you would either be able to, A, figure out what's going on, and B, if you can't figure out what's going on, at least give us certain things that we can knock out as as to what we're dealing with. Yeah, because, you know, no one's like, we're not stoned asking you this, but what's the one question everybody has? What happens when I die or they're at another dimension or time or whatever? This, to me, would be the... It, it would almost be like a is God real type revelation if we answer the questions that you're that we're talking about right here. Like, wow, there is time, simultaneous time or different people. in. I mean, they would blow the roof off of everything. Right. Yeah. And maybe that's why they don't want to do it. Exactly. Know. Yeah. Like the alien thing a few months ago, all that information yeah, like that, was that coming up, out. That blew everybody's head off when. And the government was like, yeah, you know, this is... You can't handle it. ...documented. Yeah. yeah. Right. Hey, uh, Kalani, how... Weird question, though, but you got to get funded to do this. Do you, do you just have subscribers on Patreon? Is there anything you want to plug so we can help you out? Yeah, so uh, anyone that subscribes on Patreon, all that money goes back into the content. And then literally just watching the videos on YouTube and TikTok, I get paid for viewership. Yeah. And... Just by people watching the content and engaging with the content, that that helps out a ton as well. Um, but those are usually the two things that people can do if, if they want to. Obviously, you can send donations and stuff like that, but that's not necessary. Um, just watching the stuff, engaging with the stuff, and, and then Patreon gets you even more content, and it's like three bucks a month. Oh, that's cheap. That's awesome. Hey, well, before, call me in. Before we let you go, you you had to have seen the videos of the Teslas in the cemetery and the beings that the spirits that show up on the 
I've seen that. Motion yeah, detectors. That. That's pretty fascinating. Yeah, and I think with the technology that a, a Tesla has compared to a lot of the right. quote unquote ghost hunting equipment is a lot better. So it'd be interesting to see. I might even have to get me a Tesla just for the fact of <laughs> driving it into a building and see if I can pick something up. Yeah, yeah my that's wife. true. You could do, <laughs> yeah. drive it into a haunted <laughs> yeah, building. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, my wife wanted me to drive through a cemetery and I didn't want to. I felt disrespected, well, you know, disrespect. You know, I didn't want to just be disrespectful. Congrats on all your uh, success. You're blowing up. You're down in Nashville. And um, we had you one, one, after he, that yeah, first after visit. after when he was yeah. in town. So we appreciate it. Let's do it again. Yeah, for sure. Anytime, uh, anytime you guys are ready to go ghost hunt, let me know. At, hey, when you come into Columbus, keep Rich's number and take us with you. All right, right, will do. All right, thanks.